Bayern once they had a lead, they were confident in Piglet Sivir, who did also play very well. I mean, when you draft really strong late game and you get ahead in the early game, it's like, well, uh, I guess things are looking up for Team Liquid. I mean, they have Oriana, they had Sivir, extremely powerful late game. And I, and I think that they put themselves in a situation to really succeed with that early game. So they can definitely be very happy about that. We'll see if, if the Pikmans are going to really change up much at all or if teams are kind of pretty happy with their drafts. I uh, was surprised, as I said, to see uh, the red side ban of Cho'Gath and, and TL are going to ban Cho'Gath out on blue side now here too. So I guess we'll see. Kind of indicating what you said is like, hey, kind of don't play this champion or at least currently. Uh, willing to play it given that they're banning it on both sides or was was p1 red side as well last time so did they choose red side last time because i feel like we were game looking one. at uh, yeah in game one they were definitely blue side okay so we have both sides so yeah uh cast in the last man for liquid joining cho and leblanc and there's callista once again for p1 joining the standards of caitlin and zach as team liquid line up their first pick here that's not maokai that's thrush yeah well we can see P1 actually go for the Maokai now if, if they want it. So uh, they're going to have an opportunity to grab that once again here for Zig or for Mike Young, uh, able to use that as a flex pick. The double ban on AD carry in the actual first round is, is pretty interesting. This is something that is straight very far away from what we were used to in last patch. And it's kind of interesting listening to, to Mark and Dash on the desk talking about, hey, what actually is the meta, right? Because we're seeing all kinds of different stuff. People are like, oh, tanks are so overpowered. But then we're seeing Kane crushing. We're seeing Rumble in the jungle. We're seeing Rengar. We're seeing all kinds of different stuff. So generally, people are agreed that Maokai and Shogath are OP. Uh, past that, it seems like it's anyone's game. Yep. Uh, people definitely do not have one concerted kind of uh, agreement, I guess, on, on what is the strongest picks. Yep, and I think Elise, also very good. Renova had a great game on it. Then they're going to lock in Civet as well, actually. So three of the five, the same so far for Liquid. May have found something that works for them here, at least in this matchup. And LeBron was a change there for Phoenix. Well, I like the specials time, Kench, but he is a player that certainly does want to get in there and be more proactive. So this is the kind of champion he's more used to, and I believe he's most played on the split as well. With Thresh taken away, might as well grab it. And looks like Arrow also going to change it up. Much better scaling on the Cogmore versus that Jin who's heavy on the lethality. Yeah, and I think that Braum is a really nice combo with the Kog'Ma because the incredible amount of attack speed you get from popping your W on that Kog'Ma allows you to actually proc the Braum passive stun very, very quickly. So that can be pretty powerful here. Obviously, Braum can match up relatively well into the fresh too. I do think that the champions can both be proactive, but it's kind of in different ways. Like the Braum is very strong at actually engaging a fight himself, whereas Tom Kench more it's about the delivery system, right? You can utilize your ultimate to deliver in a Maokai or a Lee Sin or whatever, and they can start up the fight. So uh, they can kind of do similar things in different ways, uh, but this is definitely much more of a, a late game focus from the bot lane. Well, another Casio ban here for Liquid who are looking to almost repeat the strategy from last game. LeVox already banned, so we'll have one freed up if they're looking to keep taking mid laners, and Nar was banned for Phoenix 1, so We'll see if they change up here or continue to maybe take out Lolo's champions. It's also time to find out, is Mike Young actually playing the Maokai or is it going up to Zig? Uh, if you want to take away another pick from Lolo, uh, you can do like a Kled or something here. You take what you think he would do next, you put the Maokai jungle, then you're pushing him down even further because they just banned out Nara, they just banned out J4. You know, these are picks that Lolo would love to play. And if you're pushing him down even further past that, uh, it certainly can get a little bit tough. Well, last fan here for Team Liquid. What's it going to be? It is Needly, actually. So, guessing that, again, this may be Mike top for Zig, or at least not wanting to give Mike Young the option of playing Needly, because it is one of his best champions. But Phoenix One going to show us a little bit more here. And there's Jace locked in. So, still some flexibility here. Yeah, I mean, this could be top. This could be mid. Um, and it's, it's kind of tough to know exactly where it's going to go. We could see Renekton or something like that come out from Morlo, which generally can kind of just deal well with whatever. And uh, it is one of the most played picks for Lorlo. Gragas is still on the table. You still can go a route like that. Uh, but this definitely gives P1 quite a bit of flexibility going into their last pick because you can manipulate the draft pretty well. Like you could put Jace top or mid, you can put Maokai jungle or top lane, and you can pick for any of these roles and then shift around the other picks to the other spots. What was Talia for Golden Glue? And what's the last pick here for Liquid? Lola needs a champion. The answer apparently is Poppy. All right, well, Poppy, I think, 
can be pretty good into the Jace, so they're assuming it's going to be Jace top lane. If they're willing to play Jace mid, though, I think Maokai is a super good matchup into Poppy. Uh, it's very hard for Poppy to ever really do anything against the Maokai, um, and your Twisted Advance is not actually affected by the Heroic Presence. You don't actually get knocked up because you go unturnable as you're going forward with that, so uh, some favorable interactions there. That's Jace mid. Or a Zig. Yeah, so I think this is really smart. Uh, you get a great matchup for your top laner, in a tank that outscales the Poppy. Yes, Poppy always always gonna have playmaking ability, but I mean, you have really strong scaling from that top lane tank. One thing that is working against a little bit is there's not a lot of magic damage, but I mean, it's magic damage coming from jungle, magic damage coming from top lane, and there's like mixed damage coming from Kogma, so it should be fine uh, from the side of P1. Certainly see, Pyrian has not played Jace this split. It's been much more of the Talia, the mm -hmm. Aries, so definitely a change there. I think TL were kind of expecting Jace to be top lane. It's a big pick for Zig, Golden, who kind of took Talia away from Pyrian. So a really smart, flexible draft here for P1 yeah. to kind of navigate into some good lane spots. I guess we'll have to see if that converts into, you know, the early game that they didn't really have in the first one. I mean, you can get yourself all the advantages that you want in pick and bam, but if you can't actually play it out properly, uh, it's not going to amount to much of anything. This is the first Poppy pick, I do believe, uh, for Lorlo as well. Uh, so certainly some new champions coming out for all these guys. And we'll see if P1 can battle back or if TL is going to be able to close out this series and, and move one step up uh, to getting closer to getting out of relegation. Haven't seen Poppy in a while either. This is one of her first appearances of the split. I believe there is currently a Poppy on the other stream, <laughs> but it's difficult for me to confirm. Regardless, certainly the first for Lolo this split, and we have not seen this champion for a while, but again, continuing to speak to the overall diversity of this meta, with the exception again of Makai and Choker, one of which was picked early, the other which was banned. It's kind of a crapshoot to see exactly what you'll get. And to me, I love it. I think this, this patch has been so much fun to cast already. All the teams have different interpretations of what is good and what they want to be playing here. So, up to find out. TL certainly found a formula in game one that worked for them, but a lot of changes here for P1 as they look to pick up this win and try and close out the series successfully. TL, though, maybe letting up a 2-0 weekend. Haven't said that in a long time. <laughs> no, I mean, it's been a really long time, actually. I mean, last split they were really struggling. Maybe they had a 2-0 weekend when they got double lift. I'm not even sure if they've had one in the last year. It's yeah. a fun stat we can find out. Kyrian, uh, I think confetti? I have never seen that. Me neither. I can say that with confidence. Yeah. Isn't, I think that's the like the RP skin or whatever, the like Bright Hammer, Jace Bright Hammer yeah, or yeah. something, you know, the, all the ones like D&D &D or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Um, I've seen Bjergsen play that skin a lot, but I've actually yeah. never seen that. Yeah, so I was thinking, ever. I've never seen the uh, confetti hammer explosion. Mm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Also named my high school rock band. <laughs> Confetti hammer explosion. Really? No, that would be ridiculous. No, Come on, man. I was like, that is that is actually incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that's the greatest thing that's ever happened. <laughs> well, down there for P1 as they might be looking to poke in on the Raptor camp. <sighs> it's too, I'm just too gullible. I wanted, I wanted to believe. You know, I was I was excited because <laughs> I was thinking in my head, okay, now we get to go watch some pastry like rock videos from high school no, and stuff. Nobody wants that. Yeah, everyone wants that actually. Oh well, well, kittens abound. Gonna help my young here on this red. It's gonna go down real swiftly with a lot of help actually from Zig, but no super leash here for my young. Just a lot of help on this first buff. And it looks like he's solo on his side, so pretty uh, reserve starts for the junglers. It's better actually generally to spread out the sapling so they proc one at a time because the debuff does not actually stack, so the initial damage will go off. But uh, if you have them spread out, then you can pull them in and, and have that dot up pretty much for the full clear. It is a small optimization, but certainly something that you should do, especially if you're actually the jungler, and you need to be able to do that on your own camps. Well, to see how bot lane develops again, because uh, that was certainly that was one of the biggest surprises of the last game. Didn't give Piglet kind of that much credit throughout the game, but I think he did play very well on the Sivir, and he got a massive landing advantage. First 2v2. I think the lane's a bit more robust for P1 this time, so we'll see if Ari does fall behind again. Right now, looking good. Yeah, I mean, things looking good as, as they're getting their early push. Uh, but certainly, Matt and Piglet played the 2v2 exceptionally well. I think they transitioned that into the lanes very well. You know, Matt having some key hooks and stuff uh, in some of the team fights, you know, namely the one at the Dragon Fight on Pyrian, really, I think, was the last hope pretty much for, t uh, for P1 to actually not get that far behind. Good ward there as well from Rainover. Spots Mike Young and steals the Blast Cone as he moves back to his red side of the jungle. Golden Goo looks like he's shoving in the lane right now. And Jace is certainly a pick that 
picking up a lot more popularity in solo queue, I believe, especially, but despite Lucian being a matchup, I know is decent into Talia, not too sure how Jace is supposed to fare. And right now, Golden Glue, he's saying doesn't really matter, because he might even get a kill here. Needs a little more mana, not enough for that next queue, but Pyrian is deathly low in that lane. Yeah, Pyrian is very low. Golden Glue's almost out of mana, so we'll see if he wants to actually stick around uh, and try to farm this up, and I think he will. Uh, I'm also very interested to see what build he goes for because um, top lane Jace was actually moving much more into this world where uh, people were even going Blade of the Rune King and stuff. They were going Black Cleaver, Blade of the Rune King, and that had been kind of a, a pretty big change up. Now in solo queue, I've actually been seeing a, a fair bit of lethality Jace, like Ghost Blade and, and Dust Blade and stuff. I've even seen Black Cleaver into Dust Blade. I've seen so many different variations on it, and I think a lot of them work pretty well. You know? I'm guessing Pyrian's gonna skip here, but the, even that kind of old school style Jace build is yeah. also an option. So, because that Pyrian might show us soon, because he's actually gonna take pretty early recall. Golden Goose sticking around, hiding his fog of war. to get this next lane shoving. Has two long swords. Looks like Dust played there for Pyrian. Lolo slams Zig into the top side. Yeah, cer down. certainly yeah. looks that way. I mean, could be Ghost Blade, could be Dust Blade, but probably going Lethality route. Um, I don't mind tier either. Like tier, generally people stopped doing it because they felt like it made their lane too too much weaker. It made their early game too much slower. Um, but the thing about it is, if you're expecting to go late game anyway, and you have Maokai and Kogma, and like you, know, you have these picks that scale well, then having a tier can be very useful for the later stages of the game to be able to keep up that poke and not be as blue buff reliant. Well. Down the bot lane. Piglet actually took some turret hits there just to get some additional damage out. So Piglet playing very aggressive, but Rona with a nice track here on the top side. Zig, oh, flashes Flash. the cocoon. Very nice there, but he's going to get towered up slightly here. Great knockback as well. Repel's going to follow and feel. Are going to get it. Rain over grabs first blood as Lolo tanks the turret. Yeah, well executed dive there from TL. Period is up here, but I don't think he can do anything. I mean, that is a full HP Elise, so. Golden Glue coming up as well, but That's play's already called off. That. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do, and the lane is in such a bad spot for Zig. Like, this is one of those spots where you're scared to even TP back because the jungler was just there, and there is a chance that they're camping for you to actually get that gank. In this case, they were not looking for that play, so he's going to be fine to push it in, but if you TP back there and die, like, that is one of the most nerve-wracking situations in solo queue because your lane is essentially over. Like, then you're going to lose so much uh, that you're pretty screwed, and here's the play again. This time he actually does have saplings to his credit. That one just timed out at pretty much the worst possible time in the bush there. A uh, Rainover went for a really long wraparound, and, and these sorts of ganks, there's almost nothing you can do. I mean, he had a sapling in the lane brush, a sapling in the tri brush, and a river ward. So like, he did his due diligence this time. We talked about last game how he had not kind of done that. But either way, Rainover sneaky path gets all the way around him, and they're able to execute the dive. Yep. Golden Glue tried to steal blue by the looks of things, but looks like that one went over to its rightful recipient. Golden Glue still able to push the lane aggressively and leave, so getting that pressure happening is Piglet. Getting quite a lot of damage though in that trade. No one in bot lane still backed. They're just sitting on those door and shields for these ADs. But again, Piglet and Matt, even though the CS is much even, that arrow should slightly exceed Piglet once this wave goes down. Piglet and Matt have been playing so aggressive in the 2v2. Yeah, they really have. And there are a lot of windows kind of take advantage of the Kog'Maw uh, because Kog'Maw is a champion that is extremely windowed power. When your W is up for that massive bonus in range and attack speed, you're super strong. But when that is down, you're very, very vulnerable. Uh, with champions like Thresh and this Sivir, you can really look to punish and go aggressive during those windows. So we'll see if they actually try to do that. Bit of a change in top lane as well. You mentioned this earlier, how tank itemization has just an insane amount of options in it right now. We saw right to score from Zeke in game one. This time actually starting off with a Barmy's Cinder. So pretty different as far as that early item goes. Lolo with, of course, that early Spirit Visage just to shake off a lot of that magic damage in lane. And so far, so good for Lolo on the CS front as well. Up almost 20 on yeah. the lobby right now. Definitely, definitely doing very well there. And I mean, most of that is just because of, of what happened with the gank and the fact that while he's dying, his wave was actually pushing, so it was denying the wave uh, that was built up. But, I mean, he can certainly come back in this. I, I, have, I have no doubt because I think this is such a strong matchup. You know, it's actually statistically the best matchup in the whole game for Maokai. So, like, it is very good for top lane. You know, over 58% win rate in this actual specific matchup. Yes, that is solo queue, but still, that does apply. 
The three man top though looking for a repeat dive. He's also setting a bot lane so Teal making plays all across the map. Matt about to get stunned, but he walks out of the way with the help of Silver Ulti and Zig. Nice all day. He's gonna try and stop, but he gets slammed to the wall by that. Looks like Golden gets a shot back here, but Rainover is gonna die. He gets the kill, but a nice trade from Zig. It looked like he actually dodged the poppy stun with his twisting advance. We'll have to see if that was the case, but well played to get a trade kill when you're already being put down from this initial dive, surviving there in the 1v3 and getting a kill back is, is nicely done by Zig. And that was very important because he is getting put quite behind. Yeah, Mike Young also able to steal away this red buff and P1 force them out of this side of the map, given that Mike Young is also showing presence here. It's also key because this is not a DPS top laner that is then shredding your turret, right? So they're just getting the advantage of the gold. It's not necessarily translating into a lot of turret damage or first turret or anything like that. Uh, so it's much more recoverable than when it's, you know, against someone who's who's chunking down your turret and taking that down very, very quickly. Poppy is not someone who can really do that. So it's here, still playing aggressive. Back to kind of roaming it all out. So watch this one again. Lolo, how does he exactly what happens here on I that route? I think he twisted advanced the route. So let's see. Uh, it's going to come out here pretty soon. They're setting up the dive. Three men come up. Golden Glue alts up there. And and he does look to make a play. Nice ultimate backwards to get the kind of extended duration. And as it comes in, yep, there it is. So Twisted Advance right as Lolo used that uh, that charge forward, actually stunned him against the wall. So it was very well done. Had he gotten stunned there, he would have not gotten the counter kill. So really, really good stuff from Zig. Yeah, and Zig's kind of getting a lot of pressure right now. So doing a good job avoiding as much as he can. Unfortunately, at some point when Teal commit that much, can't really get away from it, but looks like bottom line's starting to open up a little bit more here. Special and Arrow finding a lot more traction here in this particular matchup. And it's not going to stop Piglet, that's for sure. <laughs> Definitely a player that plays to kind of one speed only, but... Huh. Late tier actually picked up from Pyrian, so decides not to go for the first buy. I wanted to have a little bit more laning power with those early long swords, but is saying, hey, we're probably going to be locked into a long game here. Let's grab the tier, have that regen. I don't think it's that big of a deal because generally, like, it's less important, I think, to get it stacked up on, on a Jace than it is, say, on an Ezreal or something who's going to be able to utilize that uh, a little bit better and be able to stack it up a lot faster. So it still should be fine, but he's going to go lethality. He's going to go tier. Uh, and this should be a pretty high DPS build against the squishy targets, but certainly less effective against you know, tanks. And, and kind of the armor stacker is going to be popping against that stage. Good grab again onto a special, actually. Box moves in by Matt, so going to try and go all in. A special alt flashes out of the way, gets ignited by Matt, but he'll be off safely. Yeah, nice trade there. I mean, they get the summoner, they get the ultimate as well, uh, and they're going to be able to actually get a bit of an advantage there and now force on bot side because they know Arrow's by himself since Expecial had to go the long way around. Oh, nice hook from Matt. What a hook into the cocoon. Golden Glue going to shut them off with a wall. Arrow flashes in, but he's got nowhere to go. Golden Glue. Able to grab that kill Teal with a great play as they also take the turret here in bot lane. And good stuff from Matt here, moving around the map, getting the hook by mid lane, forcing summoners there from a special, pushing him back, and then they know they can actually pressure Arrow. And not only do they get the kill on him because of the hook, they get his summoners and they get that first turret. So big gold lead now from TL, and that is the first big advantage of the game. Lolo also covering mid, so able to stop that from really having anything too bad happen. As Zig and Lolo back at it again. Well, he's just going to slam him into the wall and walk away. Takes the boss going to get to lane a little bit faster. And like you said, early lead once again developing for TL. As we watch this dive again, Arrow just not really much he can do here. Well, I would say what he can do is back off earlier. I mean, his whole team was roaming down, so they very clearly knew that the dive was happening. Uh, all three members were running down. It's not like they just say, hey, maybe something's happened. They're, they know that a dive is about to happen. They're all coming down there, and he's stuck around, and he gets punished. Well, here's the swap here. Good flash stun there, but nice flashes flash. out of the cast. Merktrat's helping out there, I think. Yep. His Lolo able to get out from under it. Piglet also roamed up here, so even a potential lane swap not going to work out. Back canceled there for Zig. His Matt lands another hook. And TL, this point was so much more coordination than I feel like I've seen in such a long time. Yeah, it's a, it's a really impressive game for them. And this one does not feel like it was just off a chance encounter, you know, in the river. It's nothing like that. Uh, they are just playing it better. Some well-coordinated dives on the top side twice in a row. Then they force out summoners. They know that Braum is not going to be bot side, so they exploit that there too. So this is a really good game from TL. And Despite it not being a perfect game, this one seems more impressive to me, I think, uh, than the first one so far. Have to agree. Again, just kind of 
got given a lead in some ways and then rode it. This time Tiela doing a much better job of being proactive and setting plays up for themselves. Yeah, and the execution has been very high, right? Being able to coordinate for the dive on top stage twice in a row has been very good stuff. And Golden Glue uh, being pretty proactive here once again. Matt really has been on point with these hooks and moving around the map very, very well. Well, it looks like Rift Tower was started but stopped pretty shortly there by Team Liquid as Phoenix One were threatening around the area. An immense amount of vision sitting in that part of the river though, so certainly something that TL do want to try and take away. Golden Glue going to go ahead and grab his blue buff and return to land and shove that back out. So plenty of priority to help set up that next play for TL. As P1 still looking for that first turret. Gonna chunk down Piggly here as Arrow's moving up towards that first item. Hook's gonna miss there from Matt, just barely dodged out by Arrow. Yeah, Arrow has been very good about trading aggressively with that W, and I think that is kind of giving him more freedom to then farm up the waves uh, afterwards. So that's uh, playing pretty confidently, playing pretty well, uh, working towards that Bladed Rune King. Uh, I'm gonna be pretty interested to see what he actually goes for after, if he tries to rush towards Rage Blade or if he's going for a Hurricane, you know, what route he actually does decide to take. Because uh, we have seen some kind of mix-ups when players are saying, okay, well, it's not really about laning anymore. It's going to be about, about team fighting. Uh, we have sometimes seen people prioritize just rushing straight towards that Rage Blade even. I believe Apollo did that the other day too. Uh, so there have been some kind of cool adaptations there. And I think a lot of itemization choices can be pretty strong uh, for the Kog'Maw. It just depends on the situation. Well, Lolo smartly backing off there. Because a couple people are coming down to that bottom lane where he's currently still... Locked in the combat with Zig. Matt going to clear out that ward in the back of the Rift Pit and give it a slap. Looks like it's time for another round on the objective as the four Rift Herald headbutts the wall. Yeah, going to be able to knock this down. I mean, you have control of the river. You're at a strong point. This is a very easy way to kind of extend that. And we'll see if P1 actually wants to move over and try to contest. It has been spotted, but I don't think they're really in position to do anything about it. So now it's just about how well can they respond to the actual you know, summoning of that Rift Herald. How well can they shut that down and try to keep their turrets alive? Look at TLR moving it towards the top lane. Piglet, they're getting aggressive onto Arrow. He's trying to kite it out. Another hook lands onto X Special. Rain over He's here. The flash out of the way, but Matt with a flash flight moves Arrow back in the stun. Somehow curves around onto Arrow as Rain over. Able to grab that kill. A double kill earned by the Elasis. Team Liquid, do it again. Team Liquid to the top side again. Golden Glue on the roam. Really nice collapse here from them. Rain over coming in, and they're going to be able to pick up a lot of kills. They could go mid with the Rift Herald, which is. Maybe what they're going to do, I think they have this top one for sure, and right over heading back over there, if Jace actually does complete the base, uh, they could maybe get all three of those outers. Well, we'll a pause, have though. to pause for a moment. We'll see what's going on in just a second. But again, TL, really nice setup there on that play. Golden Glue used the wall, didn't exactly see what angle he took for it, but it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure they secure that turret by moving up to that side of the map. Seems like Liquid are the ones that need something, need to address something, but might be good. We'll find out in just a moment. Yeah, we'll let you guys know as soon as we do. And it seems like uh, it's Matt, perhaps, or Piglet, actually, that needs a little bit of help there. So uh, Piglet going to get checked out. I guess both the players maybe needing a little bit of something from IT. And as soon as that gets sorted out, we will be back into the game. But either way, it's been a lot about top lane focus for Team Liquid this game. Uh, and they have been very successful with that. I mean, they have gone back to this same point of attack time and time again throughout the game, early dives, now a rotation topside again. Uh, I think that P1 was aware that this attack was actually going to be coming, but they didn't realize how fast it was going to be there. Because, I mean, Mike Young was moving up. I think they were planning on three men defending the turret, but uh, TL essentially preempted that play by engaging on them so fast, you know, cutting out Mike Young with its Leo wall, getting in there with four men a lot faster uh, than I think P1 was really anticipating. And that has felt like a, a, what a lot of this game has been about, about TL making the play faster than their opponents and not really giving them a good chance to react. And it is nice for me to see Team Liquid actually pick up pace as the series yeah. has gone on. I mean, game one, a little slow, kind of found their nice moments, like kind of reacted well together, but weren't doing as much proactively. And then the game developed and you could tell though, kind of, pushing the pedal down, going faster, and, and eventually just the end of the game ended actually very decisively on the Liquid side. Here in this game, much more proactive, even though the early game was a lot easier. And you kind of said this already, that you consider this game to be more impressive, even though by the numbers, game one looked very good. And I have to agree with you just with the way Liquid have been playing. And for me, I'm going to have to go back to the man we always look at. It's been a while since he's really 
overperform, but ran over to me just seems to be really on point. At least game one looked great, looking good here again in game two. And even listening to the few highlights we had, his voice just seems a lot stronger. I know this is a player that's really struggled this year and was kind of in a bit mm -hmm. of a slump even at the end of last year. So Rainover being back in good health and good spirits and also playing well. I mean, he's had some great cocoons. This is the kind of guy you want doing well when you're at such a desperate point in the season. I mean, it's it's honestly been quite a long time now since Rainover has been consistently good, right? Like, coming out of Immortals, uh, he was considered very dominant, but the last time he was in playoffs with Immortals, so like a full year ago basically now, he looked pretty weak in playoffs. Then at All-Stars, yes, All-Stars is a fun event, but individually he looked very weak uh, coming onto TL. You know, that was really the biggest off-season signing that was made uh, really in the Western scene, and people were very excited about it, but he never really lived up that hype. He never really returned to the level that they were hoping for, and you know he had had wrist problems and had these health issues and, that you had kind of alluded to, so maybe that's some of it, but we don't really know, and uh, just so you guys at home know, what we're actually looking at is some of the TL players were complaining about lag, uh, so that is actually being looked into. We're finding out, is it an FPS problem? Is it actually like a latency problem or something like that? So once that is sorted out, that will be fixed up and we will get back into the game. Yep, and again, TL, I'm going to make sure everything's working well. Still, gameplay's looking just fine, so... Mm -hmm. But definitely have to make sure things are all good. Small margins definitely matter <laughs> in this sort of environment, especially given that the play for TL is uh, pretty crucial after kind of seeding up towards that top side. We'll see if we're ready to go in just a moment. Players are smiling, clicking those mice, so might be there in just a moment. Yeah, the ready checks have gone out, so we should be getting back in, and uh, hopefully there are no more issues and we can continue forward. If there are, it may have to be paused up again, but <laughs> we are hoping that everything is A-OK. -okay. That's OK. We will guide you through that as well. We're That's for it all. All the action. Pastry will be here for you always. <laughs> he will leave. As I will leave. He'll be yeah. done. I might take a nap, but Pastry will be here. <laughs> Certainly will. <laughs> all right, so we'll have a look here. Again, see it's continuing for TL in the top side of the map. For clans, that's nice. Not playing my king back the other way. Don't know if that was intentional, but can have to wait for one extra wave and actually won't get the turret just yet. Piglet, Piglet with not enough health. To try and take that down as well. Watch how this play developed once more. Yeah, so here's the play again. And Arrow's trying to chunk out Piglet. He's hoping that, okay, I chunk him out, I get the lifesteal, I move back. But look at that hook and play from Matt. Takes the hook in, flash play onto both. They eliminate the bot lane so quickly. And as you can see, Mike Young was zoned out from that Talia wall. So really good stuff. Great execution there from TL. But P1 at least defend the turret for now, and they are looking to push forward. Yep, Matt trying to find another hook, but doesn't land it. Rain over actually staying here, mm -hmm. just to make sure this wave gets pushed back out. And Golden Glue again, hard shoving the lane, has his ultimate back up, so he can roam there if needed. I mean, Clear is so good at getting lane priority. And even though Piri, you know, no sludge himself on Jace, as far as his pushing power goes, just not quite the same level of pushing and mobility as Piglet. Back to finish the job he just started there and take out that top out of turret. Yeah, they're looking to push in and do this. We'll see if P1 actually wants to try to set up a play uh, to go for a fight and defend it. Uh, Mike Young is still up here, so it's still three men strong uh, for P1. And if you can turn around and play and knock down the opponent's turret, that could be pretty big for them. Uh, Pyrian actually going Lucidity Boots, which is pretty atypical in competitive play. You very rarely see that on a champion like Jace. Most people will go defensive option. Uh, but I think it makes some sense, you know, getting that CDR for additional poke. You are going for a very poke-heavy build with lethality and... I'm not sure what actually happened with the, with the wall. Like, yeah. He just didn't ride it all the way in. I guess it's strange. But Tower nonetheless goes over. Lolo once again covering the mid lane. The other thing worth noting about Lucid Boots is it actually reduces the summoner spell cooldown. That's something that a lot of people do not really think about. Um, especially if you have Insight as well, uh, which is in the defensive masteries. You can actually get a very significant reduction on that cooldown. So he's going to have Cleanse and Flash up more often. Uh, kind of more playmaking, more poke. And it makes some sense. Certainly does. Kyrian's had a bit of a rough time here in the lane. Farming up well, it does have his dust plate now finished, but running over again, landing a nice cocoon onto Arrow, but 2v2 looking okay here for P1 with Mike Young also roaming in to make that an unfair fight. Matt returning to the top side will hoof it quickly with the mobility boots. And a special just flash there on the rain over. I'm not ah. sure what he was thinking he could get done. Maybe didn't realize that there was actually a blast cone to be able to just repel out to. So a rain over walks out scot free and Special losing that summer spell. He has been getting picked on. Bit too keen. Mystery special. 
trying to get aggressive as P1 again trying to open up a bit more space yes they have a kill in this game but still wanting to kind of get stuff done and one thing that you will say uh, comparing this game to the last is that yes P1 is behind yes TL is doing well but P1 does not just get like hard outscaled I, th I think last game they did uh, this time it's a Kog'Maw up against the Sivir instead of a Jin, right? That is a very different story. Here is the play once again. Uh, go uh, in. Brom, yeah, I think. Oh, he actually blocks yeah. the wall. I did not know it worked like that. I've never seen that interaction. So that's actually pretty big then that he was able to block that out, stop the wall from collapsing. Aha. Uh -huh. Rift Herald has to get dropped in base. It's going bot lane, unfortunately. I, I never really love uh, when players do that. I mean, it makes sense if you're going to force a play elsewhere on the map. But are they setting up for that? Not really. Everyone's just moving bot side. So you're essentially just giving your opponents a long time to actually preparate, like prepare for this and, and react. So we'll see what P1's able to do. One thing TL could look to pressure is the dragon. I was gonna press by the speed of the Rift Herald, I'll say. It's be kind of pretty zippy. Yeah, so they're probably gonna try to do that. They're looking to go order towards uh, the dragon. Yeah, because P1's like, oh, what do we do? <laughs> I mean, no one from P1 is even moving towards this. This is kind of an error from them. Like, Zig could be down bot answering this. You can CC the Rift Herald. So you can actually delay it a long time. You don't need a lot of DPS to actually kill it because you can just keep procking the eye and take it down. So. Okay. Well, they did take it down, but I think TL not quite in position to take advantage of even that. And look at Lorlo. Lorlo behind the turret trying to set up for actually a flank. Uh, we'll see if anyone can hold on to both sides. Looks like they do, but at least getting some chunk down on that bot side turret. Yeah, which still is not fine. the most effective. I think carries were in base spending their gold, so not able to actually kind of time it with the mid wave, which actually was sort of in position there as P1 for dealing with the bottom lane. So maybe a bit of a map mistake there from TL, but regardless, should be feeling okay. And I think they're more concerned about this potential fight around the Drake. Yeah, Righteous Glory completed for Zig. It looks like uh, Mike Young gonna be going for that as well. So heavy engage priority. Oh, good double play there by Matt, but he has to flash out of the way. Box is still down as the map also and to make it a bit tricky. Oh, it's going for everyone. Out of the way, but Godaloo picks up Mike Young on the other Period side. On oh, that's not good news. Piglet goes down there as Pyrian's able to dive in. Matt's also gonna fall as Godaloo trying to kite it out, but the dummy who's gonna follow. He flashes, but only to his death. He's trying to do whatever he can. Does get Arrow able to find the pick. Goldengu actually coming alive. He finally gets shut down, but he might have saved the back end. Yeah, big fight there 4p1 though they get four kills for the two maybe able to get the dragon as well and Kyrian having a big fight zig with such a good flank there from the side uh, really making it work for the team and the tanks are op lethality is op why not have both <laughs> well tl tried to start something here but only found the front line sadly yeah i mean you're able to see mike young and especially actually block up so much damage there arrow stays safe on the side zig coming through look at the maokai ultimate through everyone and then piglet and able to find the Sivir, just deletes him with that lethality. Dustblade adding so much early damage. Nice flash away by Golden Glue. Able to actually clean up a kill here on Arrow. A bit of a silly death there from Arrow as there's no need to rush that kill. You're gonna chase him down, you're gonna get him. And it's actually TL to get faster back to the Dragon and make things up. Yeah, looks like P1 maybe still concerned with some of the side lanes, but Piglet getting things started in the bot side. Remember, P1 still don't have a turret in this game, so TL able to play with a pretty significant map advantage. As Golden Glue continuing to gatekeep this mid lane turret. Did take some damage there, but gonna be just fine as TL do take that first strike. Ocean over to them. The Ocean is actually pretty big, I think, because these are two teams that wanna look to poke, wanna harass and stuff like, especially from the side of P1. They're having the extra monitor gen on Jace and Kogma who can be able to poke at you uh, is pretty effective. And from TL's side, having the HP regen to actually survive through that. Because at this point, with double lethality items, you know, at least 30% CDR plus whatever uh, Pyrian actually has in runes and masteries, like, you're gonna get hurt pretty badly from this Jace poke if you get tagged. Well, P1 again, just trying to get some pressure going here. Sideline's not in their control at all. Like, look at that damage. That's half of Rainover's health. Certainly good siege though, so Rainover getting chunked means that CL are gonna have to move a few more people into this lane. People are actually here. Golden Glow up to the side looking for a flank, but looks at things. There's a wall. Lolo's coming down too. Mike Young trapped in. They're gonna get played back into the team. Good ult there from Zig to try and make it happen, but Lolo off to that flank. That's a kill there for Salia over onto the Gragas. The rain of a barely dips out of the way as Zig will get rehooked in there by Matt. Still the carries alive for P1 though as Lolo taking a little too much damage in the front side. Does die to Zig. 
And the poke's still coming in. Another hook lands it again onto a special. Oh. There's the poke from Pyrian. Over to take down Matt. Yeah, that Shock Blast is doing so much damage. And Teal not able to fully get through to the back line. Zig doing a great job actually peeling up and, and being such a deterrent. And now P1 going to get multiple turrets. And they're going to be ahead on gold. Yep, even up the turrets as well. But gold finally in their lead. P1, I think, coming a little bit more alive. Perry oh. poke with those two lethality items is just devastating. Yeah, it really is. Any Shock Blast that connects on a squishy target is going to mean more than half their health gone pretty much here. Golden Glue sets up the wall. They're looking for this flank, and they have Mike Young under a turret, so you think this would be a good fight, but, I mean, good job by him delaying a little bit. Zig actually being so tanky in the front line, he will survive with his passive healing and lock up Morlo, who's just going to get shredded down by Arrow and Pyrian, who are essentially free firing. Golden Glue also couldn't make it into the fight. Yeah. Despite that nice wall, so... Not the best setup there for TL. Perhaps MP1 fully capitalized, taking down two turrets in the mid lane. And all of a sudden, not having some turrets doesn't feel so bad. Sure, your side lanes are a little longer than you'd like, but TL still doesn't have that mid turret, and they had the Rift Herald. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be able to get two turrets there for P1. Like you said, the Rift Herald never cast in on any turret. So uh, Zig is now getting very, very tanky. Uh, P1's getting strong. Yep, and right over, he's realizing he needs to repel. Does take the Lantern out of the way. Oh, but oh, Pyrian oh. looking for the stun. Bows enough back. Young with a big play. Gives it special to kill. That's the jungler. And now both summoners actually got blown on Piglet as well. They could look to pressure the Baron here. I think they can just start it up. They still have Righteous Glory available on Zig. No smite up here for TL. You can turn and fight very easily. Golden Blue, oh, another good block there by Special. Stops that wall short. Golden Blue can't get a look in. There's actually no vision right now as Golden Blue's trying to get his way in. Zig looks for the ultimate. Gonna try and lock down Golden Blue. Peeling a little low here, but Golden Blue, out. he's gonna shove them back through. Golden Blue's still taking down, but he's kiting out as best he can. Still not dead as all the way, but it takes out Mike Young. Now P1 stronger. He's dead as Matt's taking out Arrow. Oh no, Phoenix 1. It might just all be disaster here. Zig gets max range hooked by Matt. Roots back in on a Lolo trying to save himself, but Pyrian can't even get a poke kill on the other side as Lolo grabs yet another shutdown. And now it's going to be TL's bear, and they're going to get this almost for sure. Matt with a big hook there over on Arrow. Golden Glue kiting out the whole team and able to pull out that 4v5 very, very well. Super good execution there from TL. And Pyrian feels like he has to kind of try to stay around and, and get something done here, but Ocean is regening them back up. There's multiple red buffs that are also regening them back up, and this is gone. Special shield as well from Piglet absorbs that next little kit. Pyrian can't see into the pit, and Team Liquid are the ones that end up with Baron. Now we're going to have to see this one again. Uh, Pyrian trying to zone out with some Shock Blast, but you know it starts off relatively well. The problem for P1 is everyone's trying to collapse on Golden Glue, and they actually can't get to him. Lorlo gets in and knocks Pyrian out of the... The fight, Pyrian actually flashed into that, gets knocked out, I did not catch that on the first time through, and, and Golden Glue, look at all the damage he's getting done, just kiting out the whole team as Piglet runs untouched from the backside, pumping out this damage, and Matt with a beautiful hook over onto Kog'Ma. The fact that they try to collapse on the one side of Golden Glue and cannot kill him off meant this fight was going to go so, so poorly for them. So really good stuff from TL, they started falling behind, but find a good fight in the right back. And looks like another fight could be brewing here. Team's not shy at all. Mike Young with a big play. Tries to knock Matt back in, but he doesn't quite land the combo correctly. Ran over. Not going to start up. Special is going to get slammed into the wall by Lolo. TP complete. But P1 have already lost one, and that's a cancel. Zig cannot come into this that. Flash on arrow. They could die this Oh, he's easily. dead. Lolo's going to slam Imperium. Dies as well. That's just a massacre in the mid lane. As Golden is grabbing even more kills. The turret falls down, and Zig has to book it straight here to try and save they his They could end the game. They could actually just end the game right now. I mean, that's 40 seconds on Pyrian, 30 seconds on Arrow. We'll see if they're just going to try to tank it up. The next mini wave is going to come in with Baron Buff. Not sure if they're going to try to make the play, or if they want to just go to the sides and, and go for extra minions, but I think they can end. And him even dead, so TL are going to keep moving forward. Wave is there, Zig forced to burn the ultimate. Maybe even in more trouble. Death time is still pretty long. 10 seconds on Arrow and Mike Young. TL going to go for it all here. Lock back there onto Rain over the turret's already dead. Zig now going to get caught up in it all. It's special. Just too far forward. Hook from Matt. Fight Zig. Double play. Piglet takes down the Brom and Zig's going to fall as well. It's just a tragedy for Phoenix 1. The carry's back up. Arrow's just going to die. He walked yep. into that. Lock back in by Golden Blue. Mike Young now going to get played back into the team. P1 just marching back to their death every time they come off the respawns. TL. A very big extended push, gonna keep it going. One Nexus turret remaining, for that Nexus is theirs. Yeah, P1 completely out of sorts. They've fallen apart here. 
walking in a couple men at a time, and TL are going to close oh out my the 2-0 oh weekend. So good. Gets another hook. That's the ace completed as Lola may very well die to the combo. The Nexus is going to go down before they can fall, and Team Liquid sweep the weekend. They have got to be very happy about that, especially the dominant way. <laughs> the shades on Golden Glue. The deal of it <laughs> there from Golden Glue. Vault Boy rocking the new look. Certainly <laughs> looking good and playing so well yeah. this series. A great Talia game, solid Oriana game there as well, picking up player of the game. And TL, everything just feels like it working. Matt Life is back, landing hook after hook. Piglet playing his old aggressive self. Rainover's doing Rainover things, and Lol is even just having strong performances in lane, and then TK well, playing like a solid top laner should. It just feels like it's all falling back into place for TL, and couldn't have asked for a better time. Yeah, I mean, pretty crazy game from them. They got a very big early advantage. P1 was able to fight back into it through some pretty good team fights. And then one kind of messed up team fight by the Baron. Not only does that give so many kills over to TL, they get the Baron. They get one more team fight, they end the game. Like, that game went off the track so fast for P1. It looked like they had gotten to a pretty controlled position, a position from which they could win the game. But uh, TL some really good plays. And I think Matt deserves so much credit for this game. I actually think he played insane on Thresh, finding so many hooks, so many plays onto carries. Like, I feel like this was a, a really, really good game from him. One of the best I've seen. I think so as well. Again, a player that was known for his Thresh in particular. Mm -hmm. Certainly a champion that he's very comfortable on, but having a huge performance there on that game. And again, TL across the board, looking so much better than we've seen in a while. And for P1, it's a tragedy at the end. That's kind of how the fight sound. Unfortunately for them, the season is also heading that way. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to think how they're going to get back. They still have a very hard schedule. I believe they have Immortals and TSM still left to go in the schedule. Uh, they're sitting at three wins, you know, pretty securely in the bottom spot now. They are in 10th place. Uh, they have to be able to pass two teams, right? There's Echo Fox, FlyQuest, TL. Those are the teams that are around there, but they just lost to Liquid, right? They have to play all these top teams. Like It's hard to see how they can actually get ahead without a really good run. And they've already played the games for the rest of the weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. For a close-ish loss to Cloud9 yesterday means that they have two weeks left of games to play, and that's it. That's four matches to try and get yourself more wins. Like, that is... I mean, we're, I'm bad at math, so I'm not going to do it live on air, but we're getting to the point where it's soon going to be out of reach for P1, who, who needs something to rally back in their final two weeks of play. I mean, not only does P1 have to play very well, they are at the point where... You're, you're starting to hope for your opponents to do poorly, right? Like, it's it's getting to the stages where it starts to be a little bit out of your hands as far as, you know, not math-wise, but, like, realistically, right? Are you really going to go 4-0 uh, down the stretch against, you know, TSM and, and, and IMT and stuff the way that P1 are playing? No, they're not. So they're going to have to hope uh, that a lot of these other teams start losing all their games. Well, for a first-hand account on that 2-0 series, let's hear from Tigon and Team Liquid's starting jungler. Thank you very much, guys. Great cast on the day. I am joined with Rainover. And Rainover, this is your first 2 0 week since you've been on the roster. Tell me, what clicked this time? <clears throat> um, I don't think any, like, um, I feel like it's just because uh, as a team, we've been playing more loose and more relaxed since, like, we were uh, coming into this week. We were, like, like the clear last place. And basically, we, are, we just, like, we're in the mindset that there's nothing to lose, so we don't have to get like feel pressure on the stage or like feel pressure playing aggressive, feel pressure like making decisive call, feel pressure like diving or ganking anything. So I think it's just that um like the situation boosts our confidence in, I guess in a good way. And us playing like practice and scrims and us playing like our games, I think just make us like better team. And by us like having victories and. I think it's like e like even us getting like wins on LCS is also gonna boost up our like base confidence outside of like there's nothing to lose. So I think it's like really good situation for us right now. So you talk a lot about the confidence that you get from victory and feeling a little bit more comfortable. But tell me, what does a confident team liquid look like? How do you want to see your team play? Um, I think we had a lot of problem like making like decisive calls, and I think probably that was like our biggest like problems since like we lack a lot of confidence on like most of the plays. And <clears throat> yeah, I think confident Team Liquid can like go against any team, I think. Um, I think I can play a lot of plays on early game and I'm really confident on this meta too right now. So yeah, I think it's just like really good times coming for us. 
Awesome. So tell me a little bit about this meta. There's some big changes in the jungle, a lot of different ways you can play. How do you look to uh, play in this new 7.1, one four patch? Um, after the Bami new in the heart, basically, um, and other like tank jungles buffs, uh, there's like a lot of tank jungles like coming up on stage. And I think it's definitely mm, like favorite like meta for me. And yeah, there's like the champions, um, all, like most of tank, ch ta champ tank champions, I used to play a lot. And yeah, basically I feel like even more comfy. Like, as I say, like we like a lot of confidence and like those champions and like those like tankiness, you know, like it just build up like our confident. And yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's just really good meta. I like it. So a good meta for you, a 2-0 week this week, you're looking to play uh, Mortals next week and try to transition this uh, to some sort of playoff push push here. What are your thoughts on Immortals as a team in general? They're one of the top three in uh, NA. Um, recently, we haven't really screamed against them that much, but as we see on them on I think they're like putting a lot of like even more effort like recently after like them having like one struggling week um yeah I think they're definitely like really strong team last time we played them we like basically like got like stomped like probably like the most hard artist like on this uh this split so we're definitely like uh underdog and yeah I mean um yeah all their players are great and yeah they're really good team they, their team plays really good too so we have to work really hard and um, but I think as we going up like 2-0 this week, I think we can definitely beat them. Um, I have a lot of confidence right now, so I can play really well too. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much for the interview, Rainover. For more on this series, let's send it over to the Analyst Dojo with Dash and Mark. Thank you very much, d -Gon. Huge 2-0 victory for Team Liquid and a 2-0 weekend at that. Rainover says the best Team Liquid is a confident and decisive one, and I have to agree, this was the best they've looked so far this split, and they looked confident and decisive in these games. That was the big thing, is we saw them sometimes when they fall behind, roll over and die, or when they got these huge leads gifted to them. If you cast your mind back to some of those C9 series where they had you know, a 3,000 gold lead at five minutes, right? or against CLG, the same thing. They, they couldn't actually turn that into anything because they lacked play making here no shortage of that they're all over the map top bottom making plays and they have a really nice comp to do it you see you know the poppy has lane set up the elise has a good early game talia can roam and follow up and then you have nice setup with thresh and Sivir. so you have playmaking all over the map and the big thing is just getting together and actually pulling the trigger which they did a lot better this year it definitely will be pointing at this thresh pick for matt further throughout the segment and in future weeks i expect some teams oh, yeah. to maybe target that out because a lot of plays were created by that pick specifically but then as you mentioned the ability to to collapse from the Talia, the uh, ability to dive from the Elise, and then of course the utility of the Sivir for those late game engages. It's not to say though that this comp is perfect, especially no. when you're taking it into Phoenix One's comp, just because they have the triple tank team comp here, uh, and you don't really have a great way to chew through it. So like you need those early leads, and then you need to keep playing well, because if you ever hand the lead back, it gets very, very scary. And we did. We saw how difficult it was for Team Liquid to navigate some of these fights once the tank items started coming through for Phoenix One, when you've got three tanks to chew through. Fine, even if you're able to burst one out, trying to get through the next two before you can get to the back line is exceedingly difficult. And we have some examples of how those team fights developed for this team throughout the mid game. Phoenix One gonna be getting the better of these fights just to illustrate what Team Liquid was up against. Right, you see this kind of chain CC Thresh uh, Elise combination hitting the front line. They have vision control. This should be a good fight for Team Liquid, but they're just hitting tanks over and over and over. The shock blast comes in, arrow on Kogma, very long range, able to throw damage in, and they just keep hitting uh, tanks for Team Liquid. Right. While Team Liquid hits, or uh, excuse me, P1 hits key members. The only reason this fight did not go disastrously is because Golden Glue does a good job finding arrow at the tail end of this fight yep. to make it end up being a three for one or two overall once Kogma dies as opposed to a three for one. And then it didn't stop there. They kept having a hard time because this comp of P1 just sets up in front of a turret. They poke with Kogma Jace. And when you try and engage, there's so much beefiness in the way. Exactly. You get one tank down to half health or even kill him. And then someone else just takes his place. And then if you get through the second one, you got a third one to file in in front of him. Again, alongside the utility of, for example, the Braum is going to prevent you from getting past him, even with the ricochets and the boomerang for the Sivir. And, and that's if a fight's going well for you. If you're losing the game, these tank comps, 
end game so fast with the snowball potential because you know a Maokai shoots his ultimate out and flash W's. You flash out. All right, now your you know your escapes are down, and then here right. comes a Braum, here comes a Grog. It's the the amount of tools available to a team comp like this is it's just like four or five to your one or two escapes. And that's where we arrive at that confident and decisive moment for Team Liquid. I have to say that they showed incredible poise around the Baron. They waited for their moment to strike, and they struck as five here around the Baron. Gonna blow the Silver Ultimate with the TP coming in. Actually, it's 4v5, I should mention, because Rainover already dead. But still, knowing that this is their time to strike if they're gonna make a run back into this game. Beautiful Ultimate by Lorlo to remove one of the two damage dealers. And now you see the disadvantage of having three tanks if one of your DPS isn't there to sit behind you. That and Golden Glue had an excellent angle there. He was just pelting them with threaded volleys that entire time, and P1 was kind of chasing him to him slowly. Uh, Talia is not considered like a great team fighter in a lot of situations because she does rely a, a lot on getting her seismic shove to get her damage in. But if people are just running at you and you can kite back over unworked ground, mm -hmm. you can just keep throwing huge Qs out. And, and that's kind of what happened in that team fight, as uh, like you said, Jace had also been removed from the fight. And it was it was a really nice play out of them to, to actually take that fight and win it because P1 just kind of got overconfident. They had won the last two fights. They had come flying back into this game after being down a, a fair amount of gold. You can see, yeah, on the gold graph, it If goes, I'm Team Liquid at this point, I'm terrified. Oh, yeah. I'm terrified that the lead just went back to the other team that's running triple, tri triple tank again with a Kog'Ma ADC. All that protection, I don't see myself in 5v5s winning fights necessarily, but again, by getting that Baron and then utilizing the Baron buff to close the game quickly, knowing that again, even if they let the Baron buff expire, they might be back on the back foot. Yeah, and that's the thing is P1 feels like they have a little bit of that uh, timidness that was, uh, uh, you know, kind of plaguing Team Liquid earlier in the yeah. split. When they fell behind, things started going right or started going wrong. They, they kind of just either threw themselves at the wall and hope something worked or you back off and do nothing. You can't find that middle ground. It, it kind of felt like that this time where, you know, they're, they're coming back in the game. They're like, great, let's keep going. Something goes wrong. They lose the bear and then the game just ends. Now Matt's going to pick up player of the game for setting up a lot of key fights on that thresh. Landing the hooks, of course, in my opinion, very much a team effort here. We pinpoint a golden in multiple of these fights with fantastic positioning, both to get the DPS out and or with the Talia wall, you know, joining in those side lanes, making sure that the early kills come through. Definitely a, a complete effort. Rainover with some of those early dives in the top and bot lanes. You have Golden Glue joining in on a bunch of those. Lorlo set up a handful of fights pretty well. That Baron one critically bump bumping the Jace out. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, Matt having a fantastic performance on Thresh. One of his signature champions. I'm really surprised he got it two games in a row. Exactly. Now, sadly for Team Liquid, while they're going to feel great about the 2 week coming through, they're are in that place sitting at four and ten with only four matches left to play that playoffs is already still most likely out of their reach unless absolutely everything falls in their favor but it still will be a boon to them in terms of getting the wins needed in these last two weeks to avoid that promotion tournament that's the big thing is you don't want to have to go down there and fight some extra games for for a couple weeks and just have that you know bulk of stress on your back right as well as the fact that just winning in the short term feels fantastic you don't need to just go home and go oh god here comes another vod review where we pick apart everything that goes wrong like this actually gives you just such like a better mental state going forward into the next week team liquid pick up their first two a week in over a year but stick around after the commercial break for the decide